Hey guys, it's me, Shane Davis, and I'm here today with the beautiful, charming, lovely Yanti Lin. Hi. And we're here today because of uh, Raven of Teen Titans. Uh, wait, 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 wait. It's not Raven of Teen Titans. Who is it? Uh, could have fooled me, <clears throat> but apparently there's a character called Mandy Coriander, which is Sapphire's daughter. Oh, oh, I could have swore this was Raven from Teen Titans. But um, before we get into this, guys, please hit like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. It helps our channel out. And if you like to comment, leave a comment. We'd like to know what you think about this subject. And uh, here we go. All right. So um, what is this? Uh, walk us through this, Yanzi. Well, this is a tweet from Mariko Tamaki, which is the writer for this new book called I Am Not Starfire which is a new mm. DC YA graphic novel. Apparently they announced this um, last year, but I guess it got pushed back and now it's coming out next year. Surprisingly, it's coming out on the same month that Starlight Cats is coming out. So, you know, do you want this book or do you want Starlight Cats? Starlight Cats, Merlion Rising on Indiegogo, guys. It's uh, got three more days left on its campaign. We're hitting $75,000 and uh, we're over uh, 900 dollars uh, we're over 900 uh, backers. So we're climbing up to a thousand backers in this last three days. Do you want to be part of those thousand people? Um, lots of stretch goals have been unlocked. So go check that out. But let's get back to the story. All right. So um, here's Mariko Tamaki talking about her new YA graphic novel. Um, honey, didn't you say that Mariko is actually doing some other stuff for DC in the near future as well? Yeah, very odd. Um, I, I don't know this writer. Um, but she has been going to write, um, is it Future State's uh, Dark Detective? So the only book in Future State that actually has Bruce Wayne Batman, um, it's being handed to uh, her. Oh, <clears throat> I guess it's uh, being handed over to this lady here. And if, it, and if this is telling you anything about who is who has their hands on Bruce Wayne, uh, this book says a lot. Um this is a uh, very interesting thing. Obviously, um, Actually, she's let me pull up the cover beans. so everyone can see what the cover looks like. Here we yeah. go. Yeah. This looks very uh, Tumblr art. Uh, and that's no offense to people on Tumblr, but this isn't professional quality artwork. This isn't something that you want to trade money for. Um, you shouldn't be putting this on shelves, expecting people to buy this. This is very laughable. I'm sure this is supposed to be a lot of bo body positivity angle in this book. But, you know, the fact that the title of the book is I'm Not Starfire, I could write that book about myself. I'm Not Starfire. It's like, what does this actually have to say? I want to point out right away, though, to people, uh, we made the, the Raven reference. This is a base that is covered. This is a base that is covered, not just with um, NDC, but it's a base that's covered with Teen Titans. Uh, the character Raven um, fits this type of uh, angle of a goth chick. And there's no reason to need... This is redundant. This isn't creative. This is weak. This is a weak concept. Now... How much are you want to bet that this is... She's probably a Raven's goth daughter or something. Well... Who her parents are seems to be an issue, which actually is the second base that's already covered with the character Raven. That was a big thing. Who was her dad? And it turned out it was Trigon, a big demon guy in the DC universe. So, uh, you know, two bases covered with one stone. Way to go. Double. What? So why am I reading this? I don't know. Let's talk about the synopsis. Well, <clears throat> let's have a look at the synopsis. From New York Times best-selling author Mariko Tamaki, Lauren Dean keeps breaking up with me, Harlequin, Breaking Glass, and artist Yoshi, Yoshitani, the tenor in the House of Secrets, comes a story about Mandy, the daughter of super-famous superhero, wow, okay, and her desperate attempts to get out from under her shadow. 17-year-old Mandy Coriander is not her mother. Daughter of Starfire and high school outcast, Mandy is constantly trying to get out from under the shadow of her bright, bubbly, scantily clad and famous mother, dyeing her bright orange hair black and sticking close to her best friend, Lincoln. Mandy spends her day at school avoiding Teen Titans superfans and trying to hide her feelings for the gorgeous, popular, and perfect Claire. And while Mandy usually avoids spending too much time with her alien mother, 
She's been particularly quiet as she's been, as she's been keeping one major secret from her. Mandy walked out on her sets. While Mandy continues to tell Lincoln her plans are moving to France to escape the family spotlight and not to go to college, she secretly hides her fear of not knowing her identity outside of just being the daughter of a superhero and who she will become. But when she's paired with, partnered with Claire to work on the school project, their friendship develops into something more. And self-confidence unknown to Mandy begins to bloom. Clara seems to like Mandy for being Mandy and not the daughter of Starfire. Mm -hmm. But when someone from Starfire's past comes to disrupt Mandy's future, Mandy must finally make a choice. Give up before the battle has even begun or step into the unknown and risk everything. I am not Starfire. It's a story about mother-daughter relationships, embracing where you come from while finding your own identity and learning to be unafraid of failing if even failing in the first place. Inspiring. Don't be afraid of failing. Why would I want my kid... Uh, look, I don't know. I don't know. It, this YA book novel thing, uh, obviously DC's chasing a... It's like a dog chasing a tire. I don't think these things are selling. Um, Michelle Wells, who was in charge of the YA stuff at DC Comics, was recently let go in the DC bloodbath. I've also, there are, there was a total of about six YA book publishers that are now being consolidated into about four. There's obviously a glut of YA books and, and, and people are tackling YA. What's the weirdest thing I can just chuck at the wall? Like, again, we did a video before uh, or uh, talked about in a live stream about Johnny Heckblazer. Like, that was uh, something to, to sell kids. This is... Wow. Uh, I can't I, see and, all the parents lining up just to buy Johnny Heckblazer. Can you, honey? And and I get that um, maybe you're wanting to make a YA book about a goth chick that doesn't know who her daddy is. And a lot of people are questioning that. Is this going to be, it's her daddy, Dick Grayson? Actually, you know, if you look in the, the Twitter replies to Mariko Tamaki, you'll see that a lot of people are saying, oh, her daddy is Penguin. See? Like, oh. People are just speculating that yeah. her daddy is Penguin. Or if you look down, you'll see people saying, oh, it's Danny DeVito. So, uh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> well, let's just, say that, let's just say that even her people on her side are not taking very kindly to the design of Mandy Coriander, who obviously looks like a self-insert for Mariko. Okay, so here's the thing. When you're building a comic, guys, you do want a protagonist that you do like. Now, that has nothing to do with their body type, actually. Not not too much. Not too much. Not big. That's not, not the deal breaker. The attitude that she's having on this cover is not friendly. It is not something you want to pick up. It is not something you want to hand your child. Oh, look and at this. I, mean, I want to be Starfire. Look at how bright and happy she looks. Well, look, uh, it's really the hand on the hip. A lot of it's the posturing. A lot of it's the pose. A lot of it's the, the doubting lips. You know, these are just things. And, and is this not a little uh, not relevant today? Is the average teen girl going through a goth phase like this? Is how What is that demographic? Who is this for? How big is that demographic? Because... Uh, let's pretend, uh, well, I mean, what do you think the batting average, like how many girls and, and 13 and up one out of 10, um, what is this? Maybe zero, like Golf was point the five, Golf was maybe. The yes. 90s. Yeah. I mean, this is such a small demographic to try to sell to, uh, maybe hot topics going to order this. Maybe Ooh, you can be a sell topic, this to hot topic. Cover. hot topic. I think hot topics, the only place that can sell this. Yeah. But even how it's moving away from the golf thing, though, they're just selling Funko Pops out of the wild. Yes, mistakes. yes, uh, and anime stuff. So again, hot topic moving into anime. Any anything from Attack on Titan to My Hero Academia to Dragon Ball uh, and and uh, cute cat shirts, uh, cute kitten shirts. I don't know if this ship has sailed. And uh, while we're talking about ships, I, I let's talk about the Titanic. Is it getting ready to hit an iceberg? Did DC invest a lot of money chasing the 
you know, the tire, the dog tape chasing the tire is DC Comics about to hit an iceberg for all the capital. Now, going back to Michelle Wells being let go, it's a good sign that their YA sales are not good. And the YA market does not support this junk. It, of course, sells tons of dog man, but a ton of dog man that's been cultivated. That audience has been built. And that audience does not mean that's going to be I am not Starfire's audience. That's the problem with this is you can't just walk into the room and gain these uh, gain these readers. Those readers are specifically seeking out dog man. They're you know, they're specifically seeking out Ranga Telgemeier. They're, they're specifically built for that. They're not built for all any garbage you throw in there. And it's diluting the market, and we'll do another video about that. But it is a consolidation of publishers now with this. Some people are selling off some of their YA book companies, and there's no reason to sell off those companies if they make money. Uh, so there's some problem here. There's been a couple of signs flagging up that this market, um, too many people went in it too fast, uh, you know, and the market is not going to sustain some of these items, some of these books and DC Comics characters maybe will not translate well into the YA book market, even if you put a frumpy, a frumpy uh, goth girl there. Um, now, I, I, I'm a little curious. Um, I'm glad that does, does this person who has a uh, New York Times, you know, bestseller, does she have an audience that will support this? Uh, probably not. I don't think so. I, I really don't. Um, does she have the type of Twitter following that can pump this book? Uh, is it going straight to Amazon? I will. We'll, we'll find out. And speaking of straight to Amazon, when I tried to look up her book, I came up with the Amazon listing for the trade already. So a lot of this stuff that DC's building anyways is going straight to Amazon for people. Uh, it was the, the Dart Detective Futures End. If you go Google it and you Google her name, you'll come up with the Amazon listing. Um, is that the future of selling books? Amazon altogether. The direct market, are you going to order this? Is this something you can sell to your customers? Uh, I wouldn't advise. I wouldn't advise. I think if you run a hot topic, sure, order it. If you run a comic shop, maybe not so much. Take a look at your demographic. Take a look at um, your customer base and ask yourself, look at this cover and say, can I get them to hold this book? Can I even get them to put it in their hands for two seconds? Um, and that's a big question. And this is what you know DC Comics is turning into. So uh, I think we're going to see some interesting days coming up, um, some hard decisions. Keep in mind, um, Michelle Wells being fired, a book like this was already well in work six to eight months ago. So well, this actually, stuff, this was announced in 2019, right? So this was way before, you see. Right, right. So DC's already got money tied up in this book, and they're just going to have to push it out. Now, what that means, it is what it is, guys, but this is way too funny. Please hang in here with us as we uh, basically go through uh, the comic industry's last days. Um, it, this is going to be an interesting adventure. Also, go check out Starlight Cats up on Indiegogo now, coming down in a few days. And we're going to end this, guys, with the trailer. Hit like, subscribe, leave us a comment. Let me know what you think about this video, and uh, we will see you next time. Growing up can be rough. It isn't always easy to make friends. Sometimes I feel alone. But then I met Barnaby and learned the truth about all cats on Earth. That they need my help. But the bullies are trying to stop our fun. Together with the Starlight Cats, I can collect all the jewels. So the Great Merlion will rise. Alien rats called the Barracan live to devour all life forms. In this action adventure 48 page graphic novel, Rebecca is swept up with the Starlight Cats into an intergalactic conflict. Together, they have to find the power to stop the Barracans who are determined to conquer Earth. Only Rebecca and this elite team of cosmic powered felines can summon the magic needed to end this universal infestation. This is Starlight Cats Book One Merlion Rising. Back this project today only on the Indiegogo.